the episode. Now, find out what the captains think. The time to have to get a little excited. This is <laughs> Wicked Tuna Real Talk. All right, we're on, and you just watched the season four premiere of Wicked Tuna, a great episode, a great way to start the year. It's time now for Wicked Tuna Real Talk, the show where each week after every episode of Wicked Tuna, the captains will be in to give us a little bit more insight into exactly what happened. My name is Mike Salk. I'll be your host all year long. And joining us now are three of Gloucester's best, Bluefin Captains Dave Carrero, FishingVesselTuna.com, Tyler McLaughlin of the Pinwheel, and Captain Dave Marciano of the Hard Merchandise. Guys, welcome to the show, and thanks for being here. we got a ton to get to from this season's opening episode, including one of you guys getting off to a very, very good start ahead of the entire fleet. We'll get to that in just a moment or two. It starts off with every everybody looking for that first fish and you can really feel what's the right word is it anticipation of the season Dave? anticipation excitement ready to go walk me through that day right you're you're about to go out on the boat again for the first time for this season i know you've been on the boat in the past but now it's it's tuna go. fishing time in gloucester your quota is open you're going out on the boat what's that first day like there's first nothing day. like the first day of tuna season opening day that's what we day wait one. for all year and you're just stoked. You're happy, you're excited, you want to get out there. You're hoping that when you do get out there, there's some fish to be caught. And if you can land on them and pull that first fish of the season, really important. It's just, it's a super exciting day on the first day of Bluefin Tuna season. Dave, you're taking your, your son and your nephew yeah. and you guys are all heading out there together. Yeah, you have I mean, a sort of feeling of pride as you walk out oh, there with Oh them? yeah, like that's cool, right? And, and on, on, on that big picture, like that's great. My kid's coming this year. We're gonna go tuna fishing again. And then the reality hits. <laughs> oh, we're gonna go Good tuna too. fishing again, <laughs> right? Because I've been doing this a long time. So, you know, it, it, yeah, I have mixed emotions. Yes, I'm excited. We want to get out there. We want to catch fish. And then I think about all the days I sat out there waiting for a bite. Waiting and waiting and, and, and waiting. waiting. You know, so, you know, again, no, when it comes down to it, we're excited, especially this year. My son's gonna be there for at least half the season before he goes back to college. You know, so that's going to be a great thing. But then, you know, again, in the back is, yeah, oh, man, I hope we get some action because yeah, yeah. I hate sitting there waiting. You start thinking of each of the landmarks, right? It's like, okay, this is gassing up the boat. I know what this is. Like, okay, now I'm marking my first fish. And you start hearing Ooh. that beeping, and that's got to be the first heart flutter, right? And then it's actually on for the first Here time. Here we go. It's time. Right? It's time. Yeah, you want to take your time. Yeah. That first rod bend of the season, you don't want to lose them. Game on. Yes, let's, hey. do it. let's see it. Let's see what's going to happen. Just, it's just a nice feeling to, to get out there and get going again. It really is. You know, we've been on land for too long. And it's like, for us, it's, it's like we're doing this for our living, but it's like to, the biggest tournament of our lives every single season. Who's going to catch the most by the end of the year? Who's going to bank the most money? That's what's in the back of our minds from day one, and that's what's in the back of our minds when the season's over. And that's what it's all about, is being that top boat. And I hear it from everybody that getting on the board first is so important. Confidence thing? I mean, what is it that you, what is it, or is it just, hey, every fish matters? Dude, once you get that first one, the second there? one comes easier. And Who doesn't want to be on the pole? I want to be on the pole. Plus, it gives you and your crew a good boost of confidence. <laughs> like, okay, we're in the game right out of the starting gate. The worst thing is, is to go the first three or four weeks with nothing, because then it has the exact opposite effect, right? Yeah, you get down on yourself, right, you start right. questioning everything you're doing. Really important to get off to the right foot, especially when it comes to fishing. Yeah, you'd find yourself chasing it all year long, right? You always yep. sort of you feel can. like you're a you little can. bit behind yep. and you see what everybody else is making doing. Making left turns when you should be going right. <laughs> start making the wrong decision, yeah. exactly, because Big there's time. a bit more pressure that's built on. Speaking of pressure, Dave, you got another championship to defend. This is not the first time you've been in this situation. You talk to football coaches <laughs> and they'll tell you yeah. that gets to the crew's head. I mean, uh, you know, uh, anybody trying to deal with a defending championship can be difficult how hard is it for you it's gonna to be tough you know I mean we had a real good year last year but what we did last year is no indication of what we're gonna do this year but I know one thing these guys are gonna be coming out of the gate strong they're gonna be coming out hard Tyler you you didn't have a good year last year really right from the beginning everything just seemed to go wrong for you the year big after time. defending your championship just it wasn't the same you made some changes this year big time you know I switched over my crew I got some guys that are more serious guys caught tuna fish in the past know what they're doing definitely know what side of the boat's the port side and what side's the starboard and I think it's going to come together and give me make me a strong team you feel humbled I feel real humbled and I think I got to get back to my roots and just focus on going fishing and that's one of the reasons why I'm trying to get away from the fleet and get off on my own you make this change crew wise you bring in a couple of new guys you said yourself they're they know a little bit more about it they're a little more seasoned how much do you think the crew affected you last year 
I think big time, you know, when I got sick there and it, it kind of hampered my ability to fish because it's kind of hard being out on a boat when you're sick. And you know, if you've got guys that you can trust, they can pick up the slack for you. And that was something I just didn't have last season. What was that off season like for you, Tyler? I mean, you, you really, you talked about being humbled. Last year you came in, you were so, so brash after having won the year before and to have it go as poorly as it did. <laughs> they let you forget how to catch a tuna fish? Or, or what, was it a fluke? You know, they call me first to worst. I heard everything in the book. I mean, I got zooed every which way you could, but. For me, you know, I'm heading down to Carolina, had a strong season down there, managed to salvage myself financially, make everything come together, mm -hmm. caught a lot of fish, it was fun, you know, got the boat back up north safely, and we're charging the season hard, and really looking forward to it. Dave, you're pretty steady. I mean, yep. I always think of you as just being the steadiest guy out there, pretty even keeled. Have you had a season like that where just nothing goes your way? And if so, how do you, how do you bounce back from that? I, I haven't had a season that was poor, but I've had times during the season that we've done very poor, but we always seem to bounce back. Sometimes we start strong, finish weak. Sometimes the opposite applies, but we've always made money with the boat. We've never had a, a non-productive year. Is there like an element of, of introspection where you look at yourself and say, okay, what am I doing wrong? What Big can time. I do differently? Sure. Is it my personality? Is it my decision-making? Is it my boat? Is it my equipment? Do you look at everything? When you're not catching fish, you're always questioning what you do, where you went, what bait you used, where you anchored, are you too deep, you're too shallow, you play head games with yourself, I and it can really drive you right. nuts. And, that, and that's a trap that you yeah. can get stuck in, Big right? Time. If all of a sudden you start to think too much about what you're doing wrong, oh, it can be like this downward spiral, spiral right? And, right? You know, sometimes it's just a matter of ignoring what everybody else is doing, even if they're doing good, just keep going, stay focused, what you do works, and sometimes, and Dave may disagree, but sometimes there's a little bit of luck involved. Well, and I've heard all of you guys say at some point you can always go zero to hero out here very quickly. Yep. How fast can a, go, can a boat go from being at the bottom to being right back a up day. at the top? A couple good days of fishing. Yeah. Couple an hour. Days, you can go from yeah. nothing to having a triple header to catching three within an hour. Yep. Just like that. Tyler, not only do you catch the the first fish of the year, but then you catch two more on top of it. In fact, yeah. you caught as many fish in this week <laughs> as you did the entirety of last year. You, the changes you made really work. How's that feel? It feels great. I mean, the fish are back here. They're on the spots I like to fish. You know, life's around as whales and bait. We've done a great job rebuilding our bait resource. And the tuna fishing's red hot. I'm stoked. You know, I got three fish before I think anyone in the fleet's even got one. And, you know, we're on our game. We're having a really good time. And most importantly, we're having fun on board the pinwheel. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, Dave, you, you were second last year. And, yeah. you know, Tyler's sort of at the bottom of the pack. To see him jump right back up to the top, that's another competitor now for you. Yeah. It, you, you know what, though? In, in all fairness, so I can admit, I was impressed. I mean, that's a trick I'd like to be able to pull off, right? You know, you got to give credit where credit's due, man. That, you know, that's, that shows the kid's got talent. Sure, he's a little crazy and a little off the wall once in a while, but hey, I was 20 years old once too, you know. You always seem like uh, these things get you a little bit. Tyler scores a couple of fish, <laughs> and I see like your eyes narrow a little bit more. It's like a little bit yeah. more focus yeah. to you after that. You know, Three fish is an accomplishment, though. Like I said, you get that first fish, usually historically means the second, third, and the rest come pretty easy. So the opposite applies. Right now, it might be a struggle for us. Tyler, you think you'll change some people's minds this year? Oh, I think we're going to make some head spin. No doubt about it. I mean, we worked hard. I had good guys on the boat, and we just fished our butts off. Dave, how did you feel about the beginning of your year? Well, you know, it started, wasn't very epic, but you know what? It's the first. It's the, it's first. the first, you know, first play of the game. We're going to get back out there. We're just going to keep, you know, grinding it out. What I do have in this business is longevity. Mm -hmm. I've been playing the game for a while, and I'm just going to keep on playing. You know, and that proves right there that I can do it over the long term. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, about one season for me. It's about, are we going to be in this? I've been in the game for several decades now, and we're still here. We're still playing. Well, you finished second place last year. We'll put you over the top this year. How do you catch Dave? You know, I don't know. I mean, we're going to do the same thing I always do, right? For us, it's just a matter of keep your nose to the grindstone, take the good with the bad, and see what the end of the season looks like. Every now and then you have an easy year and things start to go your way. And then, you know, I've had years which were just like Tyler's year, you know, last year, where it seems like no matter what you do, you can't do anything right. I'm just going to hope that this is one of those years where I get good at doing things the right way instead of the wrong way. Tyler, tell me about your crew this year. I mean, we talked about the fact that you changed things up, brought in a little bit more experience. 
What do you think these two guys, tell me about them and what you think they can add. Well, when I grew up fishing with my father, you know, David always came fishing with his dad. My dad and his dad were friends, and we, we've caught a lot of fish together throughout the 90s and whatnot, and he was just always my go-to guy when I started fishing on my own in a skiff. And David was available this summer, needed a job. I said, hey, you want to get back into tuna fishing? It had been five or six years, and he was all about it. And I picked up Travis on my way up the coast when I stopped, when I was bringing the boat back from Carolina. I grabbed him in Ocean City. You're looking for someone? It seems like someone's always there. <laughs> someone is there. Right there. Hey, kid worked out great for me. He's on fire right now. I'm really happy. You know, he's learning this whole bluefin tuna fishery. He's done a lot of fishing in the canyons. I'm really excited to have him. I think he could be like a little protege for mm -hmm. me. Dave, tell me about positive attitude. I mean, nobody seems to keep up that positive attitude better than you. And anytime, I mean, you didn't catch any fish in this episode, but you always have like that little coy smile on your face, makes you think that you're about to catch one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing I do know is, as hot as it gets at times, and I'll admit at times I do get discouraged, and that's what's kind of great about Jay as a crewman. Because, you know, even though I try and stay positive all the time, there are those times when I do start to get a little down, Jay can usually bring me out of it. If nothing else, just by screwing up so bad <laughs> that I gotta laugh. The little uh, anteater that could. So that, that, that positive attitude and the need for fun, will we see you scurfing at some point this year <laughs> out the back of your boat? Is that something we can expect to see? No. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know. Shark you know, it seems waters. like a no. Shark I don't know. Waters. What did you think of that? I mean, uh, you know, I, I see a lot of sharks caught or, right, right. or cruising around the boat, and yet I also see a guy out there behind the boat you know, water skiing. Well, yeah, well, you know, hey, if that was my crew, I would have handed them a big hook. You know, there's been a rash of those great white sharks around here. Have you ever seen those footage of the, where they towed a fake seal? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That'd be the end of your, your little family operation. Here, yeah, well, that's that's a... I wouldn't do it a family, but oh, okay. just yeah. because if you know, you got some guy, he's not, you know, a blood relative, that's kind of disposable. <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking as your guys out there? We look like you guys are having a pretty good time. Yeah, we're having a good time. I mean, we're always having to jump in the water and stuff and cut rope out of our wheel and whatnot. I mean, yes, yeah, sharks live in the ocean. Yes, we do have to get in the ocean. Do you not go to the beach because of the sharks? No, I mean, come on. All right, well, hey, it's good to have all of you guys here with us for the season four premiere this year of Wicked Tuna Real Talk. I want to thank all three of our captains, Dave Carrero, Captain Tyler McLaughlin, and Captain Dave Marciano as well. We're looking forward to seeing what the rest of the season holds in store for all of these guys. Thank you so much for being with us. And tonight's episode of Wicked Tuna Real Talk was only the first of the year. We're gonna be back every week putting different captains in these same three hot seats after each new episode of Wicked Tuna here on National Geographic Channel. Sunday at nine o'clock, go to natgeotv.com slash real talk to watch all the Real Talk episodes. And you can join us again next week after the new episode of Wicked Tuna. Two of them will face off in the same room after the most explosive fight in Wicked Tuna history. You are not going to want to miss this. We'll also have Captain TJ Ott from the Hot Tuna joining us next week as well for his impartial analysis. To get daily updates on everything Wicked Tuna, like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. We'll see you next time on Wicked Tuna Real Talk.